Hi, this is your math facilitator, Naomi Andrick, and I'm going to work through a problem involving fractions um, right out of the checkpoint. This is like number 37 in your checkpoint from week 2. It was one of the, or it tends to be one of the most missed problems, something a lot of students miss, and that's why I wanted to go over it. So it does have fractions. Now, the instructions here are solve, clear the fractions or decimals first. Um, and what they mean by that is you can multiply through by some number so that you won't have any fractions or decimals, at least until the very end. <clears throat> now, if it's a decimal, like if you have 0.1, you'd multiply by 10, and that would clear the decimals. Or if there were two decimal places, you'd multiply by 100, or if there were three decimal places, you'd multiply by 1,000. Now here, since I have fractions, I'm going to be multiplying by a number I want to multiply by the smallest number for which all of my denominators are um, a factor. So it's going to be the least common multiple of these denominators. So I want to know a number that 5 divides into, that 30 divides into, and that 6 divides into. And the smallest number that all of those numbers divide into is going to be 30. So what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides of my fraction every single term. So this term, this term, this term this term, and this term. Each term will be multiplied by 30, and that will get rid of the fractions. So here, I just copy down, then I'm going to multiply it by 30. Of course, that means if I distribute this, that both this term and this term are multiplied by 30. This term, this term, this term are all multiplied by 30. Now, when I get it to this point, if I have to do 30 times 9 fifths, what I can do, since this means 9 divided by 5, I can go ahead and divide the 30 by 5. Um, and if I did that, I'd get 6, and then I'd have 6 times 9, um, and 6 times 9 is 54. So that's what I'd have there. And this one works the same way. Instead of, I've got 4 divided by 5, but I can divide the 30 by 5. So I divide the 30 by 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24, so I'd have 24x here. 30 divided by 30 is, six, is 1, so the 30s go away, and I just have 61 right here. 30 divided by 6 is 5, so I'd have 5 times 7 after I divide by the 6. Um, that's 35, so I'd have 35x down here. And then 30 divided by 6 is just 5. So um, I would end up with this simpler equation <coughs> without any fractions or decimals. Now from there I can just combine like terms on both sides which is 61 plus 5 are the only like terms here because they're both number terms and they're on the same side of the equal. Um, from there, I want to collect my x's on one side and my numbers on one side. So let's see, if I subtract 24x from both sides, I would get 11x over on the right and my x's would go away on the left. Now from there, I can subtract 66 on both sides. Um, 54 minus 66 Let's see, that's going to be negative 12, and so I have negative 12 equals 11x. And here at the very end, fractions come back into the picture. Um, I divide both sides by 11, which of course gives me just x on the right, but then negative 12 divided by 11 is negative 12 elevenths. So there's not a whole lot to do here. Sometimes I might have a fraction that needs to be reduced, in which case I'd see you know, is there a number that divides into both the top and the bottom of that fraction? And if there is, I divide the top and the bottom by, you know, whatever that number is. So if they were both even, I divide both of them by 2. Okay, and this is the solution to um, that equation. And this is how you go about solving these types of equations in general. You can approach them by getting rid of the fractions, by finding this um, least common denominator, or least common multiple, um, of the den denominators, multiplying through by it, then you don't have any fractions left, then you can solve it till almost the very end and then get a fraction back at the very end. Okay, I hope this helps. Bye.